Did you know? We can reset education in Minnesota and create schools where every student succeeds. We don't need to solve poverty first, and we can't afford to wait another generation. Our children can all be educated now, stay on track, and graduate on time ready for college and career. No one ever came to Bear's house. We can raise our expectations for schools and make sure they are choosing to do what works, every day for every child. Here's how. If schools were successful in teaching students what they need to learn each year, the picture would look like this. Instead, it looks like this. And for students of color, the odds of academic success are even worse. But there are schools in our community where students are meeting or exceeding academic standards every year. How do they do it? They use the five strategies we call RESET. Every school can use these strategies and educate all of their students today. Real-time use of data. Expectations, not excuses. Strong leadership. Effective teaching. Time on task. Let's learn more about these strategies and then let's reset education to create schools where every student succeeds. Real-time use of data. We can use data not just to measure our progress, but improve our results. Successful schools continually monitor student progress and use the results to shape instruction. The answer, okay, so you said six times six equals what? The way to increase student proficiency is to ensure our students are mastering the needed skills and subject matter. Aha! Hour by hour, day by day. In this classroom, this teacher uses an exit exam after the day's lesson so that he can plan the next day's lesson. Effective teachers make sure their students comprehend the lesson. This teacher, for instance, uses a digital monitor to determine which students do not understand the lesson. Collecting data this way allows a teacher to shift instruction based on demonstrated need. They don't only call on student volunteers, which shows that those students know the content. That would be a character's what? Who wants to help him out? Uh, somebody new, Jasmine. He's jiggling that change. Instead, they find ways to gauge how every student is doing, and they don't stop until each child gains the skills and material they need. Successful schools also share data among teachers and across grades and disciplines. Instead of waiting for big test results after the school year ends, let's measure how our children are doing throughout the year and keep working with them until they succeed. Expectations, not excuses. All of our children can excel academically if we choose to give them the opportunity to do so. Successful schools expect every child to excel and do what it takes to get them there. High expectations means expecting excellence from all children, not denying some a rigorous education because we decide they can't handle it. Effective teachers don't let students off the hook. They expect 100% participation from all of their students. How many pieces makes one whole here? How many pieces makes a whole? This should be everyone on this one. How many pieces makes a whole? And if you can't answer this, you gotta learn from it right now. Poverty does not preclude learning. On the contrary, education is one of the most effective paths out of poverty. Remember those few schools where students are on track? Those are students of color from low-income families, many of whom do not speak English at home. These are some of our state's top performing students. In fact, these schools have higher poverty rates and percentage of students of color than the district average, and yet they are significantly outperforming the district schools. Fortunately, no one told these children they couldn't achieve at the highest levels. These students are gaining more than a year's worth of academic growth each year. We can expect that from every single student in Minnesota and not give up until we succeed. Strong leadership. Children benefit when principals can focus on issues that directly impact student learning. Successful schools empower school leaders to shape staffing, resources, and culture, and hold them accountable for student and teacher success. An effective principal can result in up to seven months of additional academic growth per student per year. Leaders are more successful when they can select the best people for the job and then create the environment, allocate the resources, and provide the structure and support to allow their people to shine. Strong school leaders cultivate great teaching. As a result, teacher turnover is lower in schools with strong leaders. And by being empowered to assign teachers where they're most needed, principals can decrease student-teacher ratios in the classroom, and that's good news for our children. 
Effective teaching. Successful schools consider teaching to be effective when students master the material, not just receive it. Teachers are the number one school-based factor in a child's education. That's not surprising considering a teacher's job is to help students master the skills and information they need. Let's watch and see as two teachers engage all students. Notice that the first teacher has the students read from the board in unison. Remember, we're not looking for any time the character does, says, or thinks something. We're looking for things the character consistently or always. Circle that word. The second teacher repeats the exercise until all students are on track. Two halves. And what's two halves equivalent to, everyone? One What's two halves equivalent to, everyone? One whole. To show the impact of a teacher on a student, consider this. Having access to effective teachers dramatically impacts a child's academic career. A student with a highly effective teacher gains up to a full year's additional academic growth. Over time, this difference really adds up. All teachers enter the field wanting to make a difference. Fortunately, as with other skilled professions, teachers can improve their skills over time and make an even bigger impact. Let's see more effective teachers at work. Let's go. I need somebody to read problem number two. Go ahead, Eric. Hold on. Pencils down. Eyes up here. Go ahead. Okay. Pokemon and Optimus Prime were having a race. Pokemon said Cheetah. Pokemon said, a cheetah can run 60 miles per hour. I can run half as fast as a cheetah, Optimus Prime said. An elephant baby can run 16 miles per hour. I can run double that. If they were both telling the truth, who actually won the race? Who won the race? Whatever you have to do, Explain it so I can get what you did to get your answer, okay? Go ahead, Joseph. Um, Pokemon said that a cheetah can run 60 miles per hour, and he said he could run half. At and half of? 60 is 30. Okay, so I'm going to put P equals 30, is it? Okay, keep going. Um, and, then, uh, and then Optimus Prime said a baby elephant can run 16 miles per hour, and I can run double that. Okay. Double. 16 is 32. Okay, so, okay. Who won the race? Optimus Prime because he can run two more miles per hour than um, Pokemon. I'm going to quickly review for you those clock fractions and then review for you how to play the game. Because yesterday when I was going around, I noticed that a lot of people didn't do one particular part. And I want to make sure that you do that. What operation does it sound like we should be doing in this problem? What is, everything you see here leads us to do what operation? Yeah. Adding. Adding, good. We're trying to find how long two things are together. So we're going to add two fractions. You got three-fourths. And what's the other fraction that we have? Morella? Um, one-half. One-half, good. You got three-fourths and one-half. We're going to add them. Time on task. Successful schools have their students spend more time in the classroom and make every minute count. Most of Minnesota's children still attend school on an agrarian calendar, out in time for planting and back in after the harvest. In fact, U.S. students have one of the shortest school weeks in the world, clocking in an average of 32 hours a week. And they attend fewer school days than most developed countries. When our children are so far behind, can we afford not to invest more time in their education? Especially since students can lose two to three months of reading and math skills over the summer. By adding just 15 days to the school year, our children would gain the equivalent of an additional year of instruction by the time they graduate. However, it is not enough to have longer school days. We need to make the most of our students' time in the classroom. Successful schools minimize time spent on transition. Watch how these teachers right, help G kids move from one activity to the next. Find a spot. Moving, 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 moving. Five times seven, five times seven. Five times seven. Malik? Thirty-five. Yes, thirty-five. Okay, be ready for this one. Eleven times eleven. Eleven times eleven. Eleven times eleven. Andre? hundred twenty-one. hundred twenty-one. Oh, wow. That was amazing. So you're going to stand up behind your desk by the time I get to one. Ready? Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Show me your power position on two. One, two. Successful schools make the most of students' time in the classroom. So let's reset education in Minnesota. Let's make sure all schools are using these five strategies so that every student succeeds. <laughs>